Well, I think that's, I think that's plenty of time. I think people will kind of be jumping in. I think if people want to kind of jump in later, um, we'll kind of get started today. Uh, so welcome everybody to the um, Our Packages Book Club. Uh, my name is Colin Berkey. Uh, I am going to be the facilitator for these sessions. Um, today, tonight, what I'm really going to be focusing on is kind of doing an introduction to how the book club is going to run and kind of go over some of the like nuts and bolts of how everything's going to go. Uh, then I'm going to go into talking about introductions. Um, so I'm going to give you an opportunity to kind of introduce yourselves a little bit more so we can get to know each other. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can access these materials and make modifications to the book club materials. Um, I have a couple of questions for you. Uh, We'll get to that more kind of with your familiarity with some of the tools that we'll be discussing, because, uh, again, part of the part of the issue with book clubs is I kind of don't know what your background knowledge is. And so I kind of want to do a little bit of assessment to make sure that I'm, you know, uh, having content that's valuable for you. And then going to talk a little bit about um, Git and GitHub and then talk, start talking about chapter one. So the introduction. So uh, chapter one was pretty short. Uh, it was maybe like, you know, five or six paragraphs of information, but there was still some really good information in there that I kind of want to talk about. So the first thing that I want to do, and I'm going to share my screen with everybody here. So let's see, make sure I get the right one. So we'll do share. Can everybody see my slides? Okay, awesome. Great. Yeah, so I just want to say welcome. Uh, welcome to the book club. Uh, many of you um, have probably already have been a part of the book club. If you haven't, welcome to your first time. Uh, what I really want to do today is kind of cover like what this book club is all about and kind of what we're going to be covering. So the first thing that I want to discuss is the book that we are going to be reading through and talking about on a weekly basis. And so um, this is the book. Um, it is Our Packages written by Hadley Wickham um, and Jenny Bryan. It is completely online. Uh, you can buy a physical version if you want. Um, I suggest maybe using the online one because that one is kept more up to date than the actual print version. However, if you're somebody who wants to purchase the print version or likes the print version, you're more than welcome to do that. So here's the book itself. Uh, it has about 20 chapters worth of content to which um, I've kind of set up kind of a tentative schedule, which we'll talk about here in a second. But this is kind of the book that we'll be working through and talking and discussing throughout the entire book club. The other thing that I want to discuss as well is that this is a book club that's run by the R4DS learning, uh, so the online learning community. So many of you probably have heard of this through Slack or the Slack channel, or that's how you kind of came into this kind of book club. Uh, they are the ones who manage it. Uh, on the back end, uh, John Harmon is the person who kind of manages these. Uh, more than likely, you've seen him in discussions uh, throughout the Slack. And so um, he's going to be kind of managing it on the back end along with myself. Uh, so the other thing that we're going to do, the one other thing that I do want to highlight too, just a real quick thing, is that there is a um, R4DS online learning community code of conduct. Um, oops. So basically what this is going to be is this is just the code of conduct for how the sessions are going to run. I'm not going to read it to you word for word, uh, but just basically know that there is a code of conduct, you know, obviously just show as much respect as you can to other individuals during it, um, you know, keep things constructive and so on and so forth. But you can read this more to get some more information if you're interested. So let's talk a little bit about what the book club meetings will look like uh, each week. I'll be soliciting a volunteer to present a chapter or part of a chapter if it's a very um, long chapter, we may have to split it up. Uh, you know, we can split it up for different people. I'll be asking for volunteers throughout the session to take on the leadership duties of discussing it. You're not required to. Um, however, I do have to say that this is my third book club now. And I know there's some other people in here who have been a part of the book club. I know Ryan can probably speak to it too is one of the best ways to learn this material is to teach it. Uh, you know, So if you get the opportunity and you find that there's a subject in the book that you really want to learn or you wanna discuss more, or even if you're an expert in it, I highly suggest that you take on that opportunity to lead the discussion because you just learn so much. I think if you can teach it, you know it really well. The presentations will usually um, consist of a review of the material. Uh, we'll also probably have some demonstrations of how things work. 
I really try and focus on having this be more of a discussion and demonstration rather than just kind of going through line by line. Uh, this isn't a lecture class. I don't want to lecture you on materials. Uh, and so I really kind of want to make sure that uh, if you do prep materials or um, you are leading discussion, you know, try and focus on ways to like demonstrate things bring in other examples, other material to kind of enhance the book club and make it go a little bit beyond what the book provides. The other thing is, is if you need more information about how to present, there is a GitHub repo that contains all of this information and that will contain all of this information that are all of the review materials for the specific sessions. Uh, this is my forked repo, uh, but if you wanna access the actual R4DS one, you can and create your own fork from it. I'll talk a little bit more about if you're interested in leading discussion, but if you are interested in, you can just go to the R4DS GitHub account and then look for the book club, R packages, and you'll see all the material that's located in here. Um, so that's that. Next thing that I wanna kind of highlight, uh, just a kind of a heads up, and many of you probably have already seen the, the kind of notice when you came in. These sessions are recorded. Um, mainly they're recorded uh, for prosperity's sake and for our sake. Uh, once with those recordings, what we do is we basically um, put them on the R4DS learning community channel. Uh, I think this serves many benefits. One, because it, it allows us to go back and review materials. So like if there's something that we had a discussion about that you wanna remind yourself about, it's a great opportunity for you to go back, review it. The other thing is too, is that we've noticed that there are people in the background who want to be a part of this book club, but the time doesn't necessarily work for them. And so we've heard of a lot of people kind of watching the videos while also kind of following along for week for week. So it gives other people who are interested in the book club who may not necessarily be able to join us to have that opportunity to keep along with the book club and um, review those materials. So just a forewarning, uh, just know that it's recorded. Um, we do have the opportunity if there is something that's ac accidentally shared, like uh, if there's like personal, personally identifying information or if there's information that you share that you don't want to when you're demonstrating, we have the, we have the ability to edit that out. So don't be too worried about it, um, but just keep in mind that these sessions are recorded and you know try and keep your stuff private as much as possible. Uh, we also do, we also suggest having your camera. It is optional. I understand. I obviously want to respect everybody's privacy and comfort. So if you, if you uh, don't want to have your camera on, that's totally fine. Um, however, I do encourage it because it's, it's really nice to kind of see everybody and kind of interact and get some of that feedback to understand if people are understanding. I'm sure many of you have probably had that experience before where you're on a Zoom call and all you're doing is speaking to a bunch of black boxes. Um, that's not a fun experience. Uh, so it, it, it's encouraged. Again, I want to respect your privacy. I want to respect your comfort. So if you do want to show off your camera, you need to show off your camera, go for it. Um, but I do encourage having it on if you can. The other thing that I do want to get across to the group is if we need to slow down and discuss, let me know. Um, you're not going to hurt my feelings uh, if you if we need to discuss some stuff more. You're not going to hurt my feelings if I get something wrong and you want to point it out. Um, I want to make sure that if we need to take more time to answer a question, to better understand a concept, I want to take the time to do that. So do not be afraid to interrupt me. Um, you know, don't be afraid to interrupt other people if you want to ask a question, because most likely if you have a question, someone else is going to have that same question. And so it's good to take that opportunity to answer for everybody. Um, the other thing is, is we have a wide range of expertise in this room. There may be some people that this is your first, you know, this is your first introduction to our packages. On the other end of the spectrum, there might be people who are experts and have created several CRAN packages or packages that are on CRAN. And so the main thing that I really want to get across is these sessions are meant for us because we all are here to learn. And so um, if that requires us to have a more in-depth discussion of something, hey, that's fine. The schedule is flexible. We can always move material. So just let me know. Um, okay. So what questions do people have about how the book club kind of meetings are going to run? And I was going to ask a, or add a comment uh, earlier. You made a statement of uh, being a expert and or uh, presentation, uh, being able to, to present the material. I just wanted to add a, a comment to that. Don't 
feel that you're on the spot. Um, it's okay. This is a learning community and we're all here to help and, and I don't know, support each other. Uh, so it's okay to pause, ask questions to the team, uh, however that may, may be. Uh, this is the third cohort, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Cohort three. Yes. And it appears, it appears the, the, at least the GitHub repo is kind of empty. Uh, it's staged for us. Is it a 20 week uh, book club? There's 20 chapters, one chapter. Per uh, week. Yes. So I've kind of put a tentative schedule together. I'm going to put it on the R4DS group for people to review, but I think I put some chapters together um, because some of the chapters are really, really short. And so I try to put them together. And again, this is completely tentative. The group can make suggestions on wherever they want to move it. Um, but basically what I've figured out is starting through tonight, we'll probably get done a uh, July 20th. Um, then again, this is just a suggestion. So, and this will probably change, but that's the way I looked at it, looking at mm, probably 17, 18 weeks. Cause a couple of these chapters, like 14, 16 and 17 could be put together cause they're really short. So did that answer your question, Ryan? That did, sir. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, and Ryan brings up an excellent point, like, um, you know, take the opportunity. I, you know, I will be the first one to tell you that, uh, I am not a data scientist. I am not an expert on software engineering. Uh, I am, you know, I am a novice in a lot of this areas, a lot of these areas. And so I'm learning along with you. And so I will definitely be not afraid to tell you that I don't know. And so, um, don't be afraid, uh, to feel like you're on the spot or, um, you know, be afraid to talk about a topic that you're really interested in or want to learn more about. So thanks for bringing that up, Ryan. I really appreciate that. Uh, what other questions do people have? All right, excellent. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about pace. I've already kind of talked about it. We're going to try to cover one chapter a week. Um, looking through the chapters of the book, there are a couple chapters that are really, really short. So I've really kind of put some chapters together on the schedule. Um, I don't necessarily think there's a chapter that's like super long. Like there's a couple chapters in like R for DS that is like super long and needed to be split up into two or three sessions. But I think this, this book is fairly accessible. But again, the schedule may shift a little bit depending on how much time we spend. Um, but yeah, so we'll try and keep about a chapter a week unless they're really short chapters. The other thing is, is we're going to try our best to meet every week. Um, I don't think we're going to get into any conflicts with um, holidays. Um, you know, I know here in the United States, we might get up with July 4th. Um, in, in other countries, if you're celebrating some type of holiday, let me know. And then I can, you know, figure out a way if we should go as a group or not. And so um, unfortunately I can't say that I know every holiday that might be that we might conflict with, but if there is a holiday, please let me know. And we can kind of figure out if it works for the group. Um, we're going to try to meet every week. Like I said, um, I am going to be very strict about keeping each session to one hour and only one hour. Uh, I found that to work kind of best. Um, that doesn't mean that we can't after the hour, um, discuss, you know, the topics a little bit more. But when it comes to covering and introducing new concept or content, I found it best in the book clubs that I've been in to keep it at that hour. Uh, many of us have lives outside of this session. And so I don't want to make it unfair for other people who may have, you know, other responsibilities, you know, after the hour that they have to get to and have to balance that. Oh, shoot, I got to I really want to learn this topic and they're covering it. And I got to wait for 30 more minutes to cover it. I don't think that's fair to people. So I'm going to be really strict on the content only for an hour. And again, after that hour, we can stay and hang out and discuss more, but I'm going to be kind of really strict on like keeping these sessions to one hour. And then the other thing that I'm going to encourage the group to adopt is a go no matter what mentality. Uh, I've really found in the groups that we've had, um, regardless of how much content that you have done or how much you have prepped, I found it that you just go. Um, every week you meet, you discuss the topics and the information that you have. And I found that has done really well about keeping the groups consistent and accountable to keep the book, book club moving forward. The biggest thing that I want to avoid is making a book club stagnant um, because I don't want to get to that situation where it's like, oh, hey, should we skip this week? Oh, okay, let's skip this next week. Oh, okay, maybe we'll just skip three weeks. I found it to keep it as a, as a go, no matter what mentality. Me as a facilitator, what I'll do, um, what I can guarantee to you is usually about three, if you decide to be a speaker, 
what I will do is I will reach out to you maybe about two to three days before the presentation to ask how things are going. Um, you know, in those situations, tell me how it's going. If you're struggling and you don't think you're going to make it, let me know because then I can take it on. Um, I am more than happy to take on uh, speaking responsibilities. If something comes up, you become busy. Hey, I understand life happens. But again, I just really kind of want to encourage this go no matter what mentality. And so as a facilitator, I'll be checking in to make sure if you're responsible to say like, hey, are you ready to go? And then just be honest with me in that situation if you're going to think you're going to make it or you're not. If you're not, I'll step in, I'll help out um, and kind of carry the burden for you as well. Um, and again, I'm not going to say I'm perfect. Ryan can definitely speak to that. I, there are times that my life has gotten super, super busy and I've just had to say like, yeah, uh, there's just no way I'm going to make it. And so, um, it's very rare that will happen, but in cases like that, it, I, again, I want to make these sessions valuable to you. I don't want this to be an hour of us just kind of looking at each other. So I really want to make sure that I do, that we do have content for it. And so, um, you know, I encourage that go, go, go for it. Uh, go no matter what mentality. So, um, that's basically the pace. Uh, let's do, let's do a little bit of introductions here. I'm, I'm kind of talking, I'm, I'm kind of tired of talking already. So I'm going to give you the opportunity to introduce yourselves. Um, just here's some four basic questions that you can answer. We've already kind of talked about where you're calling from. So if you haven't had the opportunity to say where you're calling from, definitely share that with us. Um, if you are comfortable sharing, if not, that's okay. We can skip over you. You know, I obviously want to respect your privacy and your comfort. Um, but the questions I have is who are you? Uh, where are you calling in from? How long have you been using R and what are you looking most forward to in this group? So, um, who, who, anybody want to go? I can go first. Um, so thanks for organizing this um, call in. Um, my name's Brendan. I'm calling in from Toronto. Um, I've been using R at least on paper for a long time since 2017, but um, not very seriously up until recently. Um, and so I'm just looking forward to, you know, I have a lot of ideas for um, packages I'd like to create in R, but I've never really put in the time to build the skills to actually do that. So just to um, you know, learn to build our packages. Excellent. Thanks, Brendan. Um, I'll go. Um, sorry about the TV in the background. I'm, I'm with my partner right now. Uh, he's pausing it. Um, so next week I'll be better prepared and have my camera on. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so my name is Larissa. Um, I am an undergraduate student in upstate New York. Um, studying business analytics. And so I started using R last year um, with my coursework. Um, so really uh, probably about six months, I'd say I've been um, familiar with and using R Studio. Um, and I've started to kind of start to explore it more on my own in the last three months, like getting more comfortable with it. But there's a lot that I don't know. And so part of that, um, I have become like familiar with the tidyverse and have these work and obviously it's super helpful. So I'm hoping really just to develop like a better all around understanding of the entire language through exploring exactly how packages work and are developed. Excellent, thanks for sharing Larissa. Yeah. Thank you for doing this by the way. Yeah, I can go next. Thanks Colin. Uh, my name is Arun, I'm, a, uh, I'm calling in from New Haven, Connecticut, where I'm a postdoc, I'm a, a biologist. Uh, I've been using R for about 10 years. Uh, and what I'm most looking forward to is finally being able to make packages. I think I've been putting that off for many years. Uh, so yeah, thanks for, thanks for setting this up, Colin. Thanks, Aaron. It's great to meet you. I can go next. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for setting this up. Uh, my name is Isabella, calling from Chicago, I'm using R since grad school, and that's it's been like eight years. <laughs> uh, in terms of what I'm most looking forward to is I built a couple of packages, um, but it was definitely you know just trying to like figure it out by myself. So I'm really looking forward to uh, 
having a more like formal structure on like what to do and why, you know, we're doing what we do. So um, they're really looking forward to it. Excellent. Thanks for sharing, Isabel. Thank you. Hey, um, I'm Rex. I'm trying to be quiet because I'm in a open plan office. Um, and I'm calling in from Brisbane in Australia. Um, I've been using R for about five years and I've made a couple packages, but I've probably broken all the rules. So I'm trying to learn how to do things the right way. Thanks, Rex. It's so different because it's like it's nighttime here. So <laughs> it's interesting seeing somebody at work right now. So <laughs> thanks for joining in. Appreciate being here. All right, Colin, I think I'm rounding out the uh, group. Um, again, my name's Ryan. Uh, this will be my eighth book club I think I've attended. Um, I, I participated in Colin's Mastering Shiny uh, last uh, session and uh, really had a good time there. Um, one of the attributes about this particular R Packages book club is uh, I was also doing the engineering production grade Shiny apps uh, with uh, Oh, uh, I'm losing the name uh, on our, our Slack channel. Anyway, uh, EPGS, uh, Colin Fay was the author on that book, and he was using Golem as a package manager uh, to, to package the Shiny app. Um, I never successfully packaged a web app and, and was able to deploy it. Um, that transfer was actually the more difficult uh, subject of this. The R packages in general, what I'm hoping to pull from this particular book club is kind of the, the under the hood settings of our studio and a lot of the, um, I guess, the undertone variables that, that are called into a lot of our packages. Uh, sometimes you'll be in the midst of writing a script and things start to break down and I uh, I'm continually looking for help menu slash forum posts, but there's a bridge between uh, your standard R uh, styling of syntax versus the tidyverse, and that is usually where the collision starts to happen. Um, things don't uh, work as intended at any rate. Um, I'm hoping to, uh, to learn more about the overall packaging system uh, that is used by R and uh, also potentially try to help build a package if needed. So thank you, everyone. Excellent. Thanks for joining in, Ryan. So uh, I really appreciate everybody sharing today. I think I got everybody. I don't think I missed anybody. So I really appreciate everybody kind of sharing some information about you. Um, again, I, I think this is a great opportunity, not only to kind of learn more about R and R packages, but it's also really great to meet some really interesting people. Like, like I said, a really interesting story is I met another R user in my small rural community in the middle of nowhere, the United States, Nebraska. And so um, it's, it's been great to kind of meet people, you know, from across the world. And so it's just been really great to be here. Uh, who am I? Uh, my name is Colin. So hopefully you've, you've captured that already. Uh, where am I calling from? Lincoln, Nebraska. How long have I been using R? Oh, uh, probably about mm, six, seven years, probably is how long I've been using it. And what am I most looking forward to during the group? Uh, I think I've kind of been in the same boat as R and uh, I've been using R for so long, but I've just always kind of avoided the package development route. And so it was just finally one of the situations at work where I'm just like, all right, I got to learn it. So I'm uh, just going to dig into it right now. And that's just kind of what I'm really excited to learn more about. So uh, I really do appreciate everybody sharing a little bit today uh, with everybody. So uh, let's move on from here. Um, what I'm going to talk a little bit is I'm going to talk a little bit about Git and GitHub. I'm not going to dig into this, the specifics of Git and GitHub. And in fact, I'm going to ask a question for the group, a couple questions for the group to kind of get your uh, familiarity with it. But um, the first thing that I do want to highlight, it's really, really worth your time. Uh, it's really worth the time to learn. It's really worth it to take the time to learn Git and version control. Uh, it's a subject that we could discuss later on in the book. But this is a subject that's going to be really important if you do want to modify the materials. Um, it's a very deep subject. Uh, it kind of starts bleeding over into more of the software development kind of realm. Um, but it definitely provides some utilities that are good for data analysis and um, specifically package development in R. And so, like I said, it's a topic that's discussed more in depth later in the book. Um, but if you decide to lead a discussion, it's best to integrate your materials into this book down version of the materials. 
one so that we have so that we all kind of have a shared set of notes, but also so that we're kind of using the same format to kind of share the information. Um, and so if you are interested in kind of contributing to these notes, you're going to need a GitHub account. Uh, a GitHub account is basically a, a, a remote repository where you can connect all of your um, all of your Git stuff that you have locally so you can push your materials to GitHub and so people can access it. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about it uh, as we get to it, but if you do decide to make modifications to these materials, you're going to need a GitHub account. Uh, if you are comfortable with getting GitHub, that's great. Again, I'm going to kind of do an assessment here with a couple of questions for you uh, just to kind of gauge your familiarity with it. Uh, but if you are comfortable with this and you want to make changes to this, uh, how the book club suggests doing it is fork the repo to your account. So like I mentioned before, there is an R4DS book club packages um, that the R4DS learning community owns and operates and manages. So the first thing that you want to do is you're going to want to fork it yourself. Um, once you do that, create your own branch in your fork and make any modifications that you want to make. Once you make those changes, then submit a pull request back to the R4DS uh, repo for the book. Uh, basically, what happens when you make a pull request into the R4DS group, it's going to flag um, some of the maintainers to review the information. And if all the information is good, they'll give you a thumbs up and it's good to go. Nothing really too extensive. Then what happens is basically these materials get built, the website gets built, and then these materials will be available online for anybody to access. Um, so if you are comfortable with getting GitHub, again, there's a lot that goes underneath what I just discussed there. I just kind of briefly went over a lot of stuff. But if you're comfortable with this stuff already, um, that's kind of the basic ways to kind of modify these materials. If this is something that you are completely unfamiliar with, that is okay. I'm more than happy to work with you, um, even if it necessitates that I need to have a separate, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one with you through Zoom. I'm happy to do that to go over those materials as well. So I do have a couple of questions for the group and I am gonna stop sharing so I can get access to my chat window here. Uh, where's my chat? Uh, okay, so I have a couple of questions here. Like I said, one of the disadvantages of, of the book club is, is that I come in here kind of assuming some base knowledge. And so I think that's kind of unfair. One, because many of you may be experts in this subject. And then the other one, you might not be. And so I do have a couple of questions. Um, basically, I'm going to ask you some questions on a scale one to five. I'm going to put them in the chat. And if people wouldn't mind responding um, with these scales, so the first question that I have for you is on a scale from one to five, how familiar, oh, my keyboard disconnected, how familiar, how, how familiar are you with using Git for version control? One being that you're not familiar, you're a true beginner, all the way up to a five, which is you're very familiar. Something like you use Git and GitHub every day, you can handle a merge conflict like a pro. So if you wouldn't mind answering between one to five, and again, it's totally fine if you're a one. Hey, it's great if you're a five, just so I can gauge everybody's kind of level. Okay, great. So we have kind of a wide, okay, excellent. So we kind of have a wide mix. Okay, good. Uh, some people are three, some people are four. Um, excellent. Uh, so the next question that I have for you is on a scale from one to five, how familiar are you with using GitHub? Um, not just Git, but actually using GitHub. And let me explain the scale here for you so you have a better understanding. One is you are not at all familiar. You are a complete true beginner. And five, you're very familiar, such as like you have a GitHub account, you have repositories, you've created repositories before, so on and so forth. So if you wouldn't mind um, rating yourself one through five. Four, two, three. Okay, excellent. All right. And so I have just based on our feedback, I do have a third question here. Again, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use this information other than for uh, informational purposes. Um, but the next question that I have for you is on a scale from one to five, and I'll explain the scales here in a second, how valuable. Do you or how valuable would it be to devote a week to introducing Git and GitHub? One being not at all valuable and five being very valuable. Okay. 
So again, on a scale from one to five, how value, valuable will it be to devote a week to introducing Git and GitHub? One, not at all valuable. Five, very valuable. Two, four, four. That's okay to be in the middle too. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. I'm comfortable with Git. Okay. But it's valuable for the group. Okay, great. Um, excellent. So, uh, you know, maybe, um, is anybody like completely opposed to the idea of devoting a week to talking about Git and GitHub? Or here's another question. Should we wait to talk about it when we get to it in the book? What do you think? Anybody against or for? Um, now I'm looking for qualitative feedback. <laughs> It looks like in the book, it's almost towards the end, though, right? Yeah, it's good. It's like chapter, um, it's chapter number 18. So and without actually reading the text, I don't want to presume that there's going to be some advanced topics within GitHub uh, or Git and GitHub. Uh, one of the things that I'm most curious about is CI and CD or uh, mm. oh, what's the the Dev tools, Isabella. You mentioned the Dev option uh, earlier today in a different book club. That piqued my interest in other possibilities with Git or with GitHub. Um, I don't know again if those features are discussed or not. Uh, I think there's a lot of uh, collision in the book clubs with users uh, committing their changes or uh, uh, creating a pull request, uh, and then actually working through that pull request with the uh, the uh, R Studio team or the R4DS team uh, in accepting them. Um, okay. Um, how about, because next week we're going to be talking about chapter number two, which is like the full kind of step-by-step. -step. What if we kind of integrate that idea of, you know, doing some basic Git operations to kind of do a quick brush up of like, hey, once you kind of develop your package and you want to do like a, you know, a branch, git commit, commit, git push, and so on and so forth. I don't think we'll be able to get to touch on CI CD until way later on in the book. Um, so, but I am, in, I'm very interested in that stuff. Would be people be, would agree with that? Like maybe kind of integrated into chapter number two, our discussion for next week. All right, cool. So I see a lot of uh, head shaking. So again, I really do appreciate people giving the feedback again. I do want to make sure that I assess everybody's kind of knowledge because that's kind of the that's kind of the hard part is because I kind of come into these situations and you're like, I think they might know, but they might not know. So, you know, I don't want to like sit there and talk about get commit, get push if you've already done that like thousands of times and you do it thousands of times a day. So, um, yeah, so maybe we could just kind of integrate it into chapter two. Uh, one thing that I do want to highlight for everybody is, and I'm going to share my screen here again. Can everybody see my slides? Okay, great. Uh, there are resources that I'm going to link to um, if you do want to kind of get in more depth before we get to it um, later on in the book. Uh, there is the, um, you know, traditional text here for people that are uh, our users and want to use Git and GitHub. Um, it's called Happy Git and GitHub for the R user. This is available. This was written by um, Jenny Bryan and I think some of her um, teaching assistants, I think. But this is kind of a really good book if you're trying to get like all the ins and outs of how to integrate Git and GitHub with your R Studio and, um, you know, getting it kind of set up with your R projects and everything. So I highly suggest looking into this. Um, also, too, there we're going to talk about the use this package a little bit. So there's some uh, pull request helpers within this. Um, I'm not as familiar with these, but if you want to do everything in R from the console, you totally can using the use this package. Uh, there's some, if you really want to get into it, you can read the Git documentation. Uh, I've read this a couple times. Um, it is pretty in depth. Um, but if you need to know like a very specific way to do something, this is your go-to. Uh, I also suggest that I did try to do this with Mastering Shiny. Uh, one of our first kind of first meetings that we did for Mastering Shiny. I don't know if it was good or not. It might have been okay, but it's just another resource that kind of goes into Git and GitHub and how to use it. Um, I think I went from the terminal more than anything else, but that's available to you as well. And then um, many of you may be familiar with Tan. Uh, Tan is in the Slack group. He's one of the mentors. 
he put together these um, other videos that are specific for the book clubs. Um, he himself will say that these go in more how to use the terminal in Git and GitHub. So if you want to talk or if you want kind of more, more information about how to do this, I highly suggest watching these videos as well. So there is a ton of information out there to help you learn Git. And so um, I think what we'll do is next week, we'll integrate it into our discussion of chapter two a little bit. And then we can kind of do a deep dive later on when we get to it, um, especially if you want to go into some more advanced stuff like CI, CD stuff. So cool. Uh, so that is basically the intro information that I have. What questions did people have before we start diving into talking about the chapter one material? No questions? Excellent. Again, there's no way I can be as clear as possible in every, situ every situation. So if there is something that uh, you have a question about, please just do not be afraid to interrupt me in any way. Uh, so let's kind of dive in a little bit about chapter number one. And chapter one is really short. Uh, so it was great for tonight because we still have about 20 more minutes to fill. Uh, so I think we can get through what the chapter one was talking about in these 20 minutes. Uh, one thing that I'm going to try and do is for each chapter, have some learning objectives. Um, if you are leading the discussion, I highly suggest maybe creating some learning objectives for the group. Uh, these don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be completely exhaustive, but it kind of helps give us a better direction of like, what should we be learning after, or what should we have learned by reading this chapter? And so I really think, um, obviously the first one was kind of explain the book club format. So check mark on that. I think we can move on from there. Uh, Define the term R package. I think we can provide some kind of more formalized definition of it. We're going to be able to describe the reasons behind why we should develop packages and kind of discuss a little bit of the philosophy behind the use of the dev tools and use this package in package development. And so when it comes to this, the first thing is, is well, what is an R package? And so kind of meeting our first kind of learning objective is to define it. And so I've kind of thought our packages when I was reading and kind of my just general experience with this is our packages can be defined based on their utility. So uh, what are they used for? What are they useful for? Well, our packages are great to bundle up our code, bundle up data, bundle up documentation and bundle up tests for our functions and for anything else that's going on within the package. Um, it also gives us the utility that we can take all of this stuff, bundle it up and share it with other people. So whether that be sharing it with the larger community by putting it onto CRAN, whether that be me sharing it amongst my team, whether that me be sharing it amongst my organization, there's many different benefits to us for us to package it up and to ship it out to many different people, different groups to use it. Also, a package structure opens up the use of several workflow, workflow packages and tools. And we've already kind of mentioned this before, um, dev tools and the use this package. You will notice as you read some of these chapters that the functions in those packages are discussed a lot. And so um, these are workflow packages and they are useful. Well, they're also useful outside of a package structure, but I think their utility really shines when you're working with the package. Uh, I also think that our packages can be defined based on their structure. Uh, this is discussed throughout the book. It really kind of talks about where do you put files and where do you put directories and how are the directories organized and what happens when you actually go from source files to bundling it to being installed and then being loaded and so really it kind of defines about how that structure uh, goes throughout those different states and we'll kind of discuss that more when we get to chapter three but really at its core packages are defined by the conventions of how files and directories are organized and really um, at its core it's just how things are organized within uh, within your actual directory structure. And so you have things like the R directory where we're gonna put all of our functions. We have our description file, which is gonna provide metadata for our specific package. We have tests that's gonna allow us to test, uh, do unit testing, uh, do all kinds of tests that we wanna do with it. And we have data folders and many different other conventions that we can follow within that package structure. Um, if you're somebody that wants to kind of have a more academic kind of reasoning behind the use of packages and package structure, um, there is an article that's linked in the book called Packaging Data Analytical Work Reproducibility Using R and Friends. 
Um, this is more of an academic treatment. It is a journal article. Uh, I've read it. I, I thought it was really interesting because I do have a little bit of an academic background before I went into industry. And so this does a really good like kind of academic treatment about, you know, how this package structure provides utility for people in kind of an academic setting or people who may be creating um, analytic or an, uh, analytics projects as a package. And so I thought this was really interesting, especially if you want to kind of deep dive into that. Um, and it's also really important for kind of reproducibility. So obviously there are some big discussions in different fields about reproducibility of the science that people are doing and package structures is one um, piece of that. Package structures give you the ability to um, better reproduce your analyses. And so I highly suggest kind of reading this if you get the opportunity to. So uh, how do we install packages? I, I don't think this is any <laughs> surprise to anybody. I think we've all done this before. Uh, I think this is one of the first things that you learn uh, using R, um, but just so you kind of know, uh, uh, just so you kind of know again, it's just that install.packages and that library. Um, when we get to section, or when we get to chapter four, it's gonna dig into more about like, what does that actually mean? So what happens when we actually do an install of packages? What actually happens when we do a library call? And so we're gonna dig, we're gonna dig more into that later on in the book. But the other thing is that if you want to get help on a specific package, and something that I have kind of you know developed throughout the years is going back to the documentation that's built in with the package. Rather than going out to the internet to find information or Googling, Googling that information, I've really kind of tried to force myself to really go into that source information that the package has. And so to access some of that information, you can use this package question mark X, or you can use this help package X. And so if it's a well-documented package that you're using, there should be really good documentation for it. Not every package that you use is going to have great documentation, but um, if you're using the tidyverse and stuff like that, um, there usually is good documentation. And especially if there is um, packages that are out there that have been around for a long time, they're usually usually well documented. Uh, many of you are probably familiar with CRAN or the Comprehensive R Archive Network. Uh, I'm not an expert on CRAN. Uh, if anybody wants to add more to what CRAN is, um, the way I basically understand it, it's just a distributed uh, set of servers that people have devoted um, for uh, packages to be on. Uh, CRAN is also a kind of like a, the way I understand it, kind of like a formalized review of packages that can happen. So you can submit a package to CRAN. There are people that review that package information to make sure it meets the standards of being on CRAN, and then it becomes public, publicly available to people. So uh, before I kind of get myself into deep waters, is there anybody that's a expert on CRAN that could fill in some of my gaps of understanding of it? Okay, great. Again, I don't want to wade in waters that I'm not, I'm not able to swim in. So um, but again, I really, it's, it's basically where you get all of your um, publicly available um, packages from. And so what's really nice about this is you can actually see all of the packages that are available on CRAN by going to, um, you know, the CRAN.rproject.org and clicking on this packages section here under the software section here on the left nav. So if you click on this and what you get is you can actually get a table of all of the packages sorted by name. So if you wanna see all of the available packages on CRAN, you can go here. And if you take a look over here at my right scroll bar, you can get an idea of how many packages there are available to you. I mean, I have already scrolled about six, about 10 or 15 times over here, and I'm only through um, all the packages that have the letter B as the first letter. And so if you're somebody that's interested in seeing like, okay, what is available to you on CRAN, this is a great place to kind of review those packages. I've also found that if you're trying to find something that somebody else has already done, go to this page and do like a do like a command F if you're on a Mac. And then I don't know, let's just do let's do mixed effects models or something like that. Mixed effects. So say you're trying to do mixed effects modeling of some type and you're interested in packages that are available to you. This is a great way to quickly go through and see if you can find a specific package that may meet your meet your requirements. Now, not every package that you can see in this is gonna meet your requirements, but it's a good start to kind of figure out, okay, what's out there? 
rather than just going straight to Google and just trying to wade through all of that stuff that's algorithmi uh, algorithmically fed to you. So there you go. Um, no shade on Google because I use Google every single day, but it's just good to kind of go to the source if you're really kind of digging for stuff. So uh, what questions do people have about CRAN or, or using this kind of package listing of the packages that are available? Well, and I'll try and find the couple of links. One was uh, like popularity uh, for the CRAN packages of what gets uh, pulled most often. Uh, or installed most often. And then the second one, there's a, I, it's like a, almost like a resume online kind of thing where you uh, list out all your package developers. Mm -hmm. If anybody within our team currently has is, is done that before or, or created that, um, I always find it uh, curious uh, or interesting to read about that individual, kind of the background of where they came from and, and why that package was created, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, being able to learn the history of what it was that they were doing at that time uh, or the, the problem they were solving by creating another package. Um, I always find that uh, uh, very riveting. I may be unique in that statement. So um, I don't know. I'll try to find those two links though. Yeah. And, and I am a little biased in CRAM because there are other repositories that are available to you. Um, I know, I think Aaron, uh, Aaron, right? Did I say your name correctly? Yeah, you're, you're in biology. And so I think there's bioconductor is yeah. also the other. Yeah. 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 It's sort of like grand, but just like biology related packages. Mm. Yeah. So I don't want to be, remain biased because there is a lot of different repositories where these are at. Um, but the majority of the ones that, you know, I'm familiar with that I work with and that the book kind of talks about is on CRAM, but understand that there are other publicly available repositories to which you can find this information. So um, excellent. Great. Uh, so that's that. Uh, let's move on to why should we develop packages? Well, um, really, because it allows us to more easily share and use code amongst the team and other collaborators. Uh, so I have a team of three people that I work with. It's great that we can create a package structure to communicate our analyses. Um, the other thing that's really nice about it is, is that it gives us the function to document what our functions actually do. So if I have one of my team members write this really kind of abstract function that I look at the code and I have no idea what it's doing, I can pull up their documentation and get kind of an idea of how it actually works. Uh, the other thing is it saves yourself and your team's time. Uh, I don't know how many of you uh, enjoy spending uh, the majority of your time wrangling data over and over and over again. Um, yeah, it, it's kind of comes with the job, so I'll do it. But I mean, we can make that job a lot easier by actually creating functions that help us kind of wrangle data or do whatever we need them to do. And so part of that is that modularity of it. It's, a, it's basically a module that you can take and apply to different issues that you may come across. As a benefit of that, you're saving time. It also opens us up to the use of several tools to more efficiently write our code. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about testing and unit testing. Um, it's gonna give us the ability to uh, more efficiently make sure that we are, and, oh, we're gonna talk about tests. We're also gonna talk about our command check and all that. It's gonna give us the ability to receive rapid feedback from the computer and from our code so that we know if things are going good or if they're not good. And that instant feedback that we get back from us is gonna help us be more efficient and help us write better code. The other thing is it helps us define a formal organizational structure of where to put things. Um, I don't know how many of you uh, have you know, projects that you're working on right now. Uh, I opened up a project that we've been working on. Oh man, probably it's probably been like five years now. I opened it up and then I was just like, I have no idea what these files are doing. Uh, they are just a hodgepodge. It's just a hot mess. That's just all I'm gonna say about it. It's something that we need to fix. And that's what we're focusing on is turning that into a package. And I will say that um, part of that issue is when we were first putting it together is we just didn't have a standardized structure to follow. And so we were just saying, ah, I don't know, we're just gonna name this file, this, put it here, it works, great. you know. Um, but now it's really kind of forcing us to say, these are the conventions that we need to follow. And there's reasons behind these conventions. Uh, the other thing is it allows us to develop more robust, rigorous, reproducible analyses, which I've already kind of talked about already. And then the last thing is it helps us write better code. Um, one thing that I've kind of come across about writing code is this idea of quality assurance. 
You're not going to get it perfect every time. Um, you're human. But what you can do is you can put kind of guardrails. Uh, you're gonna, you can put some like formalized guardrails in what you're writing to write better code. And so you can have a better quality product at the end of your development process. Um, so some of the philosophy behind the tools for our package development. And so I did feel this was a little confusing within the book um, because I first thought about it as in like automation, as in like automating your reports, but it really was focused on automation of package development. And so really when you talk about packages like dev tools or use this, the adage is of the reason why those were created was anything that can be automated should be automated. And so this automation that these functions provide for us gets us away from doing things by hand. And the reason why it does that is it's going to help us better learn how the workflow actually works. It's going to have us change our thinking rather or change our thinking from where do I put this into what should my package and what should my functions be doing? I don't know about you, but I don't want to spend time thinking about, okay, where do I put this? Uh, maybe I put it here. Maybe I put it here. Rather, if I can call a function from dev tools or use this to set up everything that I need to do, I can spend more time thinking about how my package can solve the problems that I need to solve. Um, so we're going to use dev tools and use this heavily. And then the other thing is, is these tools kind of help us insulate from those low level details of how things are built and, and how the packages need to be set up. Um, so how do you install those packages? If there is one thing that you take away from this entire conversation tonight, download these, download these two packages because we are going to use them a lot. Um, you're going to use a lot of functions from the dev tools and use this package. So one thing, just do this before next week because we'll, we're going to start talking about those. What if you need more detail? Um, kind of, if you need more detail, if you're somebody who uh, reads the book and you find that it doesn't meet all of your needs, uh, the official manual is writing our extensions. This is the uh, canonical document of how you actually write a package. Uh, if you want to, you can check it out. Uh, I have attempted to read some of the, the, the chapters. I will be honest with you. Uh, sometimes I was reading it and I had no idea what, what I was reading. Uh, that's not a function of, uh, that's not an issue with how the documentation is written. It's just very comprehensive. And so there are some things in there that I just did not have the background knowledge to understand. But if you're somebody who needs more information and there's something specific that you're trying to figure out, this is the place where you go to figure it out. So um, just kind of a, hey, just so you know about it, it's available to you. Um, but just know if you do, because I, I, I did the naive mistake of like, all right, well, I'm just gonna start from the top and read section one. I probably got to maybe two sections and I was like, yeah, I can get a better use of my time. So, um, okay, so that's pretty much chapter one. The rest of the chapter kind of gives like a brief overview of every single chapter, but I don't think it's worth the book club's time to sit there and talk about um, what each chapter is going to be about because we're going to get to them. So just a quick note. Uh, so this is not in the book, but I think it's kind of important, especially with the book club, is don't get overwhelmed. Um, we may come across like stuff that we talk about that, you may never use and that you may not be concerned with. Uh, you know, I will tell you that I have already read the licensing chapter and I will tell you um, I am not a lawyer. I am not interested in licensing my software. I should be interested in about it, but it's something that I may never use because I'm not quitting stuff on CRAM. We're just using stuff internally. So there might be stuff that you come across that you may not necessarily need. So don't get overwhelmed if you see something and you're like, I don't know where this is going to fit. Don't concern yourself with it. Just keep moving on. Uh, at the base core, just remember in our package at its core is just an R directory that holds our functions. And so if you kind of find yourself and we're talking about like a very niche area of a package or a very niche kind of concept, just go back to that concept of like, it's just an R directory and that's where I'm putting stuff. Um, and then the other thing that I really want to get across to the group is you are not expected to know everything in this group. Uh, I will be the first one to tell you that I will get something wrong. Uh, and so do not be afraid to point out if I get something wrong. Uh, the other thing that I want to point out is we are all learning. So um, just, you know, contribute as much as you can. Um, be supportive of everybody. Uh, none of us is as smart as all of us. Uh, so I think our collective contribution together is going to create like a really good learning environment. 
the other thing that I want to get across, it's okay to say, I don't know. So don't think that this is a place where we need to think that we are, we need to be in a position to know everything because honestly, this is a lot of stuff. So it's okay to say, I don't know. Um, and it's okay to ask for help. And just again, to reiterate, we can stop at any time to discuss, just let me know. Don't worry. You're not going to hurt my feelings. You're not going to hurt other people's feelings. Because if you have a question, more likely than somebody else is going to have a question as well. So with that, we got about uh, four more minutes left. So what questions do people have about chapter one or anything that they want to add or um, just any general comments? Yeah, I was just wondering, how do we go about signing up for chapters to present on? That is a great question. Um, I'm thinking about the best way to probably do that is to do like some Google sheet. Um, and then you can sign into like that shared Google sheet and then just sign up for the chapters. Um, mainly because, I mean, the best thing to do would be to uh, do it through GitHub, but I guess we're going to talk about that some more. So I'm, I'm, I'm speaking out loud while I'm thinking, so I shouldn't be doing that. Um, let's just put a Google sheet together and, you know, I'll share that with everybody and I'll have the chapters listed with like the tentative dates on it and you can sign up for stuff that you're interested in. Does that work for you, Brendan? Yep, that sounds good. Any chapters you're interested in doing? Uh, maybe when the sign up sheet comes, I'll take a closer look. Okay, great, great. Yeah, I'll do, I'll do, I'll do like a Google sheet. That's a, that's probably the best way to do that. What else? Does anybody else have any other questions? Going once, going twice, going a third time. All right, great. Well, uh, that's basically all I have uh, for tonight. Um, you know, I can hang out here if anybody wants to kind of talk one on one for a little bit. Uh, other than that, I'll see everybody next week for chapter two. Um, if anybody wants to take chapter two, let me know. I haven't put the materials together yet, but um, again, I'll default to it if nobody wants to take it. And if you're still kind of feeling things out, that's okay too. But if you're somebody who really wants to take on chapter two, let me know in the Slack and we can get things figured out. So really great to meet everybody. I look forward to seeing everybody next week. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks Colin. Bye. Thanks, everyone.